And speaking of Alaska, that's where North is off to next. Where the plane lands on the ground and... Wait, what? 1991, what's your feed? Where's the joke? I don't get it! The plane touches the window? Why is that funny? Answer me! So he gets to the Eskimo village where... Oh, God, this isn't inaccurate at all, is it? It's like if the Polar Express meets the Flintstones. I'll give the film credit, though. At least they did get Native American Graham Greene to play an Eskimo here. I mean, it's not like they got Kathy Bates spray-painted her face and slapped on a black wig like a minstrel show. No! No! You go back to your room movie until you learn something about being racially sensitive! And just when you think this movie couldn't possibly get more insulting, just watch what they do with their grandfather, played by Good Burger survivor, Abe Fagoda. What do you mean it's time to flow? Well, when an Eskimo gets too old or weak to contribute to society... You're not. The whole family gets together and everybody walks to the ocean. You're really not. And then the revered old Eskimo is proudly placed on an ice floe and set out to sea so he can die with dignity. Yes! Apparently Eskimos get in line to shove off their old farts while a ticket holder moves the line along while they say goodbye. Good fuckity God! Oh, don't worry about him, North. He's had a great life, and he's happy to set sail before he starts embarrassing himself. Come on, let's go, pal. This is no surprise to you, is it? You Next! Let's go. Don't act like you don't know what's going on here. Come on, let's go. First of all, when this was done, it was done in times of famine, not just because they were old. Second, this was incredibly rare and only done as a last resort. Third, this happened eons ago. Nobody does it anymore. I mean, did you do any research? Do you know anything about how the world works? Read a fucking book! Meanwhile, back at home, the real parents of North are put on display in a museum because I guess they're still comatose. And apparently, Rob Reiner thinks this is still funny. I'll now take questions. Yes, how long are you going to milk this joke? Oh, and remember that newspaper kid who printed the story originally? Yeah, the film suddenly decided he's a villain. You see, all the kids in the world are now threatening to leave their folks and hire John Lovitz as their lawyer, which somehow propels him and his new partner, the child newspaper editor, into being the most powerful and richest people in the world. Okay. As we speak, grown-ups across this great land of ours are feeling humiliated. They blame North for all their frustrations. Do you realize how many of those angry parents would like nothing better than to do away with our little friend? My god, it's a young Dick Cheney! But for North to be martyred, doesn't he have to be killed by one of those angry parents? Well, maybe we'll get lucky. It is Dick Cheney! Ah! So North then travels to, oh great, we're making fun of the homage now, wonderful, classy. I'm thy new father, and this good woman who art my wife are thy new mother. And these are thy new brothers who art named Ezekiel. I have always dreamt of a life without the ever-present nuisance of electricity. Uh, uh, just let me grab something from the plane. Floor it! Well, at least their cruelty to the Amish was short. So he goes to Africa, where of course everyone is in a grass hut, dropped by China, where everyone hails him as some sort of emperor, why don't you have him just drop by France, where everyone wears berets, smokes, drinks wine, and every TV channel has 24 hours of Jerry Lewis It's the next scene, isn't it? <laughs> you are scum! Finally, North seems to come across a nice family with a father played by John Ritter. They have a white picket fence, eat dinner together, and even gave birth to Scarlett Johansson. That was nice of them. Yup, they treat North like he's one of their own. The only downside is this would be his new brother. It was a darling story, Mark. So while his new family seems downright perfect, North, for some reason, still isn't satisfied. North, we just don't understand why you're leaving. Neither do I. The script forgot to give me a reason, so... Bye. Just gotta be alone. We're going to miss you, too. <laughs> and so will Oliver. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing your ass at Lawson Translation. It's gonna look great. 
So he walks back to New York, uncertain of what he's going to do, when he suddenly bumps into... He sits down next to a very beautiful young lady. Shh! If you walk by quietly, maybe he won't notice you. Son of a bitch. It's Joey Fingers, nice to see you. And you are? North. Always been one of my favorite directions. Huh. This film is so bad, you'd think they would have used that joke earlier. But nope! They were saving it. So North wonders what he's gonna do when the mythical powers of Willis's wisdom finally puts everything into perspective. You realize something that takes most people a whole lifetime to figure out. And some people never figure it out at all. That a bird in the hand is always greener than the grass under the other guy's bushes. I hate you. So Willis drops him off at the airport so North can meet up with his folks who I guess finally snapped out of their coma. And remember kid, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of Miami. Well, what does that metaphor mean? What metaphor? You ever been down there in August? Your balls stick to your leg like crazy glue. You know, for kids! Where do you think you're going? I'm going home. Not on this plane, you're not. Why not? It says here you're dead. But I'm not. How can I be sure? I'm standing here talking to you. I know, and that scares me. And since I don't scare you... And one uninspired comedy routine later. What's he doing? He's trying to get back to his old parent. It'll ruin everything! Let's get him! So the kids chase him down when suddenly... Okay, wait a minute. That was two minutes without a Willis cameo. That's not even enough time to change costumes! What are you? Some kind of guardian angel? Well, I guess you can say that. Because in a manner of speaking, we at Federal Express feel that we are guardians. Guardians of your most important packages and priority communiques. Federal Express. Our creepy Bruce Willis stalkers are here to serve you. So Willis finally gets him home, as it turns out his parents aren't there. They're at his secret spot, which apparently wasn't so secret if they knew about it, waiting for him to show. And who else should be there but the judge, of course, wearing the robe and everything. All right, you wait here. I'll go look for him. Good idea. Bad idea. Let me remind you, the ruling stipulates that North is supposed to be in the arms of both parents. That's two parents and four arms. You know, no offense, Judge, but I put more stock in the dancing Edos. They at least had a little bit more class than you do. So North rushes to a secret spot as the spawn of Cheney apparently has a henchman there waiting to kill him. Just how powerful is this kid? Does he also have an army of demons at his beck and call? On the Hamlet! Oh, on the Hamlet! So North rushes towards his parents, the henchman gets out his gun, pulls the trigger, and... It was all a dream. What? You actually went to the lowest common denominator and made it all a dream? You ass of shit! You still here? I must have fallen asleep. Come on, I'll give you a ride home. Along with all the other great lessons of this movie, take rides from strangers. Especially if they dress up like the Easter Bunny. That's a good idea. Thanks a lot, mister. Don't mention it, kid. And remember, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Yup. An hour and a half of unfunny jokes, ethnic stereotypes, and hate filled stupidity just for something you'd see on a welcome mat. I hope you enjoyed this journey of racist insensitivity. Allow us to replace the credits with the words WE'RE SORRY A HUNDRED TIMES! THIS MOVIE IS AMAZING! It actually goes beyond belief. In today's PC world, for a film like this to get made, let alone for kids, it's scary as shit! How could anyone green like this? How could anyone sign on for it? How could they get all these big-name stars for such an ugly piece of cinematic prostitution? Maybe Rob Reiner thought he had too many good films and he had a bad film to even it out. Personally, I now see why Siskel and Ebert hated this film so much. And I really agree with Roger Ebert when he ended his review by saying, I hated this movie. Hated, 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 hated this movie. Hated it. Hated every simpering, stupid, vacant, audience-insulting moment of it. You're too fucking nice! I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to!